wonderful. Academia, is there here someone from the academia? All right, it seems that we have beautiful a mix of, of people um, and different sectors. And who is coming from the country that is in EU? EU country? Okay, and from outside of EU? All right. And who heard about the GDPR and knows what the GDPR stands for? <laughs> Okay, fantastic. So we have the right people in the right place. Uh, wonderful. So what is it going to happen and why we actually talk about the data portability? Uh, we recognize the data portability, so the Article uh, 20 that gives us the, the right to the data portability, the right to actually ask for our personal data uh, in a proper format and to, to have it used uh, in the, the other services as, um, yeah, this is the right that is written in the GDPR, but at this very moment we still feel that this is the right that is rather formal than actionable. It is something that is still not necessary like being used. This is still something that is written there that people have the right to, but it's not necessary yet operationalized um, and, and uh, actionable. So we would like to explore here together with you how to make it happen how to improve it. Of course, that's we, we speak about the context in the context of GDPR. So you might think like, okay, it's about you, but we know that also the other countries, the other regions are looking into the data portability or either already like having this in their legislation or are planning to have it in their legislation. So I'm sure that this is also relevant for, for those of you who, who also come from the other other regions than, than the EU. Um, and yeah, we represent present my data global and also the a new governance uh, my data initiative so we would like to talk about the article 20 and about those like you know how to make it really how to operationalize it and of course we will look through through uh, on that through the lenses of my data of this human centric approach to personal data we see it as one of the means to, to achieve data portability, one of the tools. So we would like to also like speak with you if this is, this is enough, this is, uh, if, uh, and, and how to actually improve it. Um, so at the very beginning, in the, in the first part of the workshop, we'll spend our, one hour on setting the scene. So to, to, to talk about like what, what about this Article 20, why we see it as this un, uh, un, unactivated trigger for, for the development. We will have some cases. We will introduce you to, to, to My Data, My Data Global and the New Governance Initiative. And then we will break into four groups. And we will work together on the, on the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities of threats or making the data portability actionable. And we will wrap up with the reflections and the summary. Does it sound good? Are you ready for that? Great. So now I would like to uh, give the floor to, to Matthias and Oliver. Uh, they will speak about the Article 20. So, hello everyone. So I'm Olivier, I'm the CEO of um, a startup called OneCube, and we do data portability. And I also work with my data on the governance initiative. We'll talk about a bit later. But first, about uh, Article 20. Here is uh, Article 20. Um, Article 20 is a bit of an alien within GDPR. When we think about GDPR, uh, we first think about more protection to the individual, and uh, more responsibility for organizations holding uh, data. But um, uh, in this respect, data portability looks a bit strange. What it says basically is that organizations holding your data have to offer you, offer you means to get back your data in order to transfer it to other organizations. So it's different is a new right, and it's very different from uh, the right to access that was existing in many countries way before this. The purpose of data portability is to move your data around, to be able to move your data around. And uh, behind this, um, the EU had, um, had in mind to avoid lock-in effects, so organizations that um, keep uh, your data inside silos, inside their information system, and um, this was uh, a way to avoid this. 
but um, we see that asking this to organization uh, is not enough. We don't see a lot of data portability uh, today. It's uh, not activated properly yet um, because it's very, very difficult. Strategically, it's very difficult to organizations when they are thinking about opening up their information systems, they, um, they, um, they fear that they will be destroyed by competitors. Only the GAFAs, so mostly Google, Facebook, and so on, are really comfortable with opening up personal data. Other companies, not so much. Then we've got interoperability aspects. It's very complicated to, uh, to flow data around like this. We also have got uh, legal issues. There is no concrete liability framework for all of this, so companies fear uh, to move data to other companies. And we've got other issues like uh, design, for instance. Uh, it has to be very seamless for it to be uh, operable. So um, it's a very complex issue, and um, that's a pity because data portability might be the most disruptive aspect of GDPR. We could see two um, benefits from data portability, two kinds of benefits. One that we could call uh, competition portability, the uh, obvious one. Uh, the ancestor of competition portability might be the portability of your phone number. Uh, you can switch your telecom operator easily while keeping your, your phone number. This would be the same when you want to change your bank uh, and uh, your insurance company, your retail company, and so on. You take your data with you. But there is um, an another kind of portability that we could call cooperation portability, where you use your data from one service to move it to another service for a, a different purpose. Then you create innovation, and um, you uh, repurpose your uh, data. But technically, it works exactly, uh, exactly the same. So there are many benefits uh, we can uh, envision, but many hurdles uh, today. And uh, Matthias will talk about the benefits. Yes, hello. So just to uh, have, uh, so that's what you already talked about. Okay. So just uh, hello, uh, my name is Matthias. I'm the CEO of Visions. We're working on uh, education and employment uh, data portability. Uh, just to give you a small uh, use case uh, to see the impact of uh, data portability in those fields. And we're talking, as Olivier said, on uh, cooperation portability. Imagine you're a pupil, a high school student or a student. Uh, you say, okay, I would like to do this in this job. One, you, you port your data from the university to an orientation application that tells you, okay, uh, you could do this job, you need those skills, you port those data to a training application that gives you the right trainings next to you, and you port all of this data to local uh, recruiters and employers to get a job. And as you get the job, you need other skills, so this data still flows to to the training application, to the orientation application, and to the university, so that it can really, all those actors can collaborate with the right information to give you the right skills at the right time and help you accomplish uh, your, um, your, your goals on the one side, and for the organizations, they have better information to, to actually do their work. So this could be a, an open network that is being created at the service of personalized education, but also of a more uh, a local employment and of lifelong learning. And to, in order to make this happen, we need collaboration between all of these actors, we need interoperability, and we need also education to people on how the data is used and uh, how they can easily easily move it around. And these are all the things, that the issues Olivier was talking about that we need to address in order, in the end, to have better education and better uh, employment for all. So this is one use case in the education sector. So here is another topic where data portability could be very useful. So uh, it's um, we're talking about uh, mobility and especially cities. So here is a very specific use case uh, around uh, eco-friendly mobility. So Im imagine 
your city proposes you an app where um, you can port your uh, carpooling data, your scooter data, all your eco-friendly mobility uh, um, data could be uh, um, uh, ported to the city app. Then your city could propose you um, eco, um, eco mobility points, like fidelity points, that you could reuse in other services, mobility services from the, from the city. This could be an incentive uh, for eco-friendly uh, mobility. This is a specific uh, use case, but we've got many, many around mobility, and especially with city data platforms, we are seeing all over Europe right now, and, uh, and further than this, cities thinking about building their own data platforms, and mo mobility seems to be one, seems to represent one of the first um, concerns for, uh, for cities. So this is an example. Hi, everybody. I, my name is Sila Sepp. Uh, I'll take over here to also introduce you uh, my data and uh, my data global. Um, just to start with, how many of you have actually heard about my data? Can you raise your hand? Okay, quite may, uh, many of you. For those who uh, have heard about it, maybe there's something new uh, from the presentation that I will share with you. Uh, for those who haven't, um, really good to, um, to share uh, the work that we uh, are doing. And uh, probably also for those who uh, rose your, raised your hands about uh, knowing my data, it also might mean many different things for you. Um, so as my data, it, we see it as an alternative idea, a vision for human-centric personal data management. Um, it's also technical principles uh, defined in, in the My Data Declaration. It is also My Data Global Organization, My Data Community, and the wider movement towards this human-centric uh, personal data. And I, my goal here is to walk you through, uh, through the different parts, um, what my data could mean, and in the context of GDPR, data portability, and how to make uh, data portability also um, actionable. To start with, uh, with an idea. Um, it doesn't come as news uh, for you. The personal data is uh, really everywhere. Um, and uh, with the kind of everyday actions that we um, do in our daily life, we leave behind digital traces um, of our um, kind of digital extension of, our, um, of ourselves. And this, um, uh, this, uh, has created the situation where personal data has increasingly um, uh, getting more value, especially when combined with different types of data sets. And hence, from this uh, personal data, you can uh, generate new intelligence. Who has intelligence has also more power to actually set the agenda what happens um, with, uh, with our data. At the same time, we are also, we can say that we are entering in an era of, of so-called awakening, with the different uh, personal data scandals, data breaches, misuses, and so forth. We are understanding what actually is being done with the personal data and uh, who, has, who has and who hasn't uh, got um, um, yeah, real control over, over the personal data. Uh, at the same time, there's also great potential to use that personal data uh, to create new, great, innovative services um, to uh, yeah, bring benefit to the individuals as well as societies. Um, and there's a, a great, very likely that uh, using personal data um, services uh, um, can also uh, yeah, solve or mitigate many of the big challenges that we face today. So what? How to, how to really move forward uh, from the situation where uh, we are facing uh, this uh, um, need of yeah, great potentials, uh, but at the same time great concerns over privacy, over data protection, and that there is this situation where we live in a very digital uh, world. 
Um, there are great examples already um, in the personal data management where uh, free flow of data is being tried to achieve. Um, we can look at uh, from the three different models uh, of API ecosystem, platform model, and the MyData model, uh, where yeah, APIs are being used to actually open the doors and connect different services to, um, to move some data. But at the same time, it's also very hard to make sense of, of what is how is the, those APIs built and opened up for, for different services? And as you see, the individual is also in that model uh, very much outside of, of that uh, ecosystem. At the same time, we see also those big different yeah, tech corporations uh, developing their big platforms to connect different services, name it your home services, health, so forest, mobility, and to connect it and make more seamless and smooth uh, data flows. Again, this creates great um, asymmetry of, of power, who can decide what happens with that data. Um, and we at MyData believe that we shouldn't be reliable on, on those big, big corporations. In, instead, uh, we believe that uh, the human over who the personal data is really about um, should uh, be in the center of, of this all. So be, becoming this kind of um, connection and control point um, for those data flows, and in, in that sense, also making the whole ecosystem and data economy much more democratic, fair, just, and in the long run, also much uh, more sustainable. So in the, uh, oh, the core idea of, uh, of the MyData is that individuals should be in control of their own data, meaning you and I should have um, much more understanding and effectively also control to say uh, who has data about us, what they can do about it, and also alter those decisions over time if we would like to do that. We see that right as a digital human right that is inalienable uh, for us, and, uh, and the MyData approach aims to strengthen those digital rights with combination of opening new opportunities for businesses to create those um, yeah, new innovative beneficial uh, personal data-based uh, services and build on very much on mutual trust. As our topic today is GDPR and data portability, it's also important to yeah, position my data in the context of, of this uh, new regulation that we got into effect last year and it's very much aligned uh, uh, with uh, the thinking of my data that we need strong data protection and uh, protection over data, uh, data privacy. But it's not only this. As you can see in the horizontal axis, there's from weak data protection to strong data protection. We've made already uh, great advances on that field, um, but it doesn't also uh, right away allow lots of data usage in, in order to actually create those innovative uh, services, com combine different data sets. So my data aims to really do that. And hence, you can say that GDPR and my data are, uh, in some sense, very much aligned. They're not completely the same, but the, the overlapping part is that we want to strengthen individual rights and trust towards uh, data handling. And how do we do this then? How do we move towards this uh, my data model? And uh, I come uh, here to, uh, with, uh, to the, the second point of the MyData declaration and to the uh, different uh, technical principles. In 2017, a group of people came together to think this through uh, from the point of, of what uh, are the principles that need to be applied to make the MyData model happen. And uh, they defined the declaration that is uh, available our, our, on our website. It's also available in, in 10 different languages, uh, Korean and Slovakian being the, the, the last editions. And before I get to uh, talking about the shifts, it's always important to take a step back and understand the why. Why are those uh, principles needed to be applied? And uh, uh, we uh, can look this uh, through the three shifts that we want to um, achieve uh, for a just, a sustainable and prosperous digital society. The first one, today's topic, is uh, from moving from formal to actionable rights. 
And this means that, uh, yes, we have the great regulations like, such as uh, GDPR, but they are hard to implement. Um, they are sometimes also very, really obscure for uh, com uh, companies to make sense of. And hence, we want to move to a, a situation where those rights become, let's say, quote unquote, one click rights. You go and uh, you can port your data, uh, you can exercise your rights in a very uh, smooth and seamless way. The second shift that we want to see is moving, it's more even from the mindset where the data subject or the person is seen as the weak, weak uh, participant in the whole dec uh, data ecosystem who needs to be protected. We, uh, to the actual mindset where um, individuals become empowered agents um, and kind of like a partner in the data ecosystem to move their data, to you create those benefits, be a partner to the organizations to enable that uh, data flows. And finally, moving from a closed to open ecosystems, as there is such a uh, real great market lock-in, um, uh, uh, there's um, hard to get access to the data sets that are available um, for some of the organizations and to create much more democratic, uh, fair and healthy competition into the digital uh, economy. Um, and then, how do we make those uh, three shifts happen? Uh, I walk you through also through uh, very quickly uh, of these my data principles. There are six of them. First one is, is being the human-centric control of personal data, individual having the means, the practical means, um, to actually exercise their rights in a smooth and, uh, and seamless way. Second one, be individual being the point of integration as uh, we saw in the different personal data management models, um, the person being in the center actually gives the means uh, for uh, having a trustworthy way uh, to manage their own data about them, and hence uh, the risk of, of, of for privacy, uh, for example, um, is mitigated. The third point is individual empowerment. I already mentioned this, that uh, the, really the shift to um, to have uh, individuals as equal partners in the data ecosystem. Fourth one, today's topic is re about really the key thing about portability, uh, accessing and reusing the data sets that are um, uh, gathered and collected and used, uh, um, the data that is uh, about us, and make it really truly uh, available to port your data in a machine-readable format in commonly used and, uh, and structured way. Um, the fifth uh, principle is transparency and accountability, uh, meaning again that uh, today's long-term and conditions uh, documents uh, are not really satisfactory. We need to uh, uh, be able to have um, uh, practical means uh, to have um, better understanding what the different considerations there are about uh, data usage um, and also have organizations responsible for their um, yeah, usage, uh, intended and sometimes also unintended consequences of, of data usage. And sixth is um, most uh, relevant for the, for the tri third shift of, of uh, opening um, up the ecosystems is interoperability to really enable this true free flow of, of data. And for that, we need uh, great, better business models as well as uh, technical standards. This doesn't come very easily. So we have a lot of different challenges uh, from the business and economic uh, side, from the social side, from the technical side, from the legal side. Um, and at the same time, those challenges can be also opportunities. So that's why it's really great to see that we have a very good mix of different uh, people from different sectors. And I uh, welcome you to, to keep that perspective um, uh, later on during this workshop to also bring your contribution, how those things uh, could uh, kind of be met together to solve the, this, uh, these challenges. You can also see that there are different years, so uh, things take time, um, as well as uh, that uh, the developments in different particular sectors might have different paces to have make those changes uh, happen. So again, the time perspective, the do domain specific um, uh, perspectives are important to take into account. And the sec uh, second thing to keep in mind when uh, we go into the workshops um, is the, um, the point of views or the perspectives of, of the participants in the data economy. The first one being the individual 
nobody actually wants to go home after a long day to start managing their personal data. So we want to uh, find ways how it can be the mo easiest way, the, the smoothest way uh, that they are empowered, but it doesn't become, let's say, a burden. From the data using service-wise, they of course want quality data. They want it uh, in the best way that is up to date. It's uh, yeah. Um, structured, it can uh, be the same in different organizations and uh, the best way to um, also use it right away. And finally, the data uh, source where the collect data is being collected, that th they want to keep their, their customers, they want to be trusted and they want to be transparent, but also benefit uh, from being actually the, the original data source. And how do we do make this happen? <laughs> Challenge those, uh, um, figure out solutions for those challenges and move forward. And we believe that it can come really from this thought leadership that com comes from uh, making sense of all the different challenges of the, the, yeah, that we face today, find also uh, real uh, solutions or uh, trials that we can pilot, um, connect the communities and organizations that are already in the network doing this uh, work, probably as well as uh, you are, and then facilitate also particular ecosystems to test certain solutions and then apply if they are successful. And this brings me to the my final point, what my data can mean is the global organization, the community and the movement that started already some seven years ago in 2012. You can see here many different logos uh, that represent or yeah, give cues on personal data storage, standards, uh, organizations that work on standards, that work on personal data applications and so forth. And <clears throat> And these represent uh, some of the participants, not uh, everyone, who are in the My Data community and movement working uh, to tackle those uh, challenges. So the models uh, that we, I presented today and that um, Matthias and Oliver also presented, they're actually happening already. It's not really alternative or kind of uh, visionary in the sense that it's not real. Um, it's rather that how can we also make that ecosystem more um, uh, functioning? Um, and what we do in the My Data through the movement have, and the community work uh, from the previous years have, that we've come together in the conferences in, in the past four years, where we have also uh, developed and published the My Data White Paper in 2014, uh, um, the declaration that we um, developed in 2017. And I welcome you to actually go to the, to the website, also sign it if you agree with it, uh, we have already uh, 574 signatories as of uh, yesterday. Um, and then that community work, connecting communities, bringing this thought leadership up, resulted in, in establishing the organization last year. Um, and we have today um, about 600 members, over which uh, 80 are organizations. And it's really, we try to be and really, really reach out to different corners of the world to get that um, yeah, diverse perspectives on those issues. Um, and we're happy to have uh, members over uh, 40 countries. We try to keep the organization also really flat. So the, uh, we're headquartered in Finland, um, but the team is really small in, uh, because uh, we try to also, and we believe that um, the action is happening, uh, happening locally. In the organizations who are actually de developing services uh, and software in the local hubs that bring the local communities together. And I'm happy to see also Dominic and, and Beatrix here who represent the My Data Germany. So welcome. Um, here you can also see some of the local hubs that we have around the world. Uh, it's mainly here in Europe, but we have um, also hubs in in US, in Brazil, in Cameroon, uh, Sydney. I think Charlie is here from Cameroon somewhere as well. So I'm glad to have uh, Charlie here. And uh, finally, I want to yeah finish off with again re repeating going into the My Data Declaration as the main resource for these principles, which are much more um, explained and, and um, elaborated than I did uh, today to really get even further uh, insights of, of this. Also the My Data Papers, um, our main communication channel is Slack. I invite you to join the different focus discussions uh, around particular topics. And if you agree and want to also support the movement, uh, then join as member. So thank you right now for, for this part. I will give the word again to Matthias and Oliver who would um, present the, um, a new governance and then we uh, go into the workshop part.
Thanks. So, inside my data, we started um, an initiative called A New Governance to talk about uh, standards and governance as the standards. So, um, so the idea, it's written here, uh, is to build a democratic platform to coordinate all uh, stakeholders of the data economy uh, in order to create standards for the free flow of personal data under the strict control of the individual. If we look uh, at the landscape, I don't know, maybe it's too tiny for you to read, but um, we summed up the standards landscape that we have. Uh, we are talking about moving data around from one organization to another, and maybe to another, and another, and another. It's infinite, potentially infinite. So we have to talk about standard if we want to make it well, uh, to make the cost of it affordable. What we, so we decomposed um, three kinds of initiatives here. Uh, the first one is uh, DTP. DTP is a data transfer project. It's a standard initiative from the, the GAFA, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, uh, Apple, and, uh, and Twitter, that was announced only two months after uh, GDPR was enforced, uh, so last year. And um, as we said, those companies are great at moving data around. They know what to do technically. There's no problem with it. And they've got many very useful, many important data. If we're talking about mobility or education, they have it. Um, so it is important. The problem is um, that the approach they have is very platform-centric and not user-centric. So we, inside my data, we want to push the user-centric approach. Um, then, in the middle, you get various initiatives, especially since GDPR. Uh, GDPR fostered a tremendous uh, amount of initiatives around standard standardizations. The problem is that uh, you've got initiatives mostly by country, uh, by sector, like retail, uh, telecommunication. Uh, you, you've got a lot of um, things like this into the, uh, for the financial industry. Um, and Basically, we are recreating silos. The idea be behind data portability was to break silos, avoid lock-in, but we are re recreating uh, small silos. And uh, finally, you get the European Union with um, um, GDPR itself. That created a framework for us, a common framework for us to work around data, but it, it wasn't enough uh, it wasn't precise enough for the ecosystem to um, activate it. So if we could combine all the three um, types of standardization initiative and find a way to make people talk together, make stakeholders talk together, then uh, we, would, we could come up with the best standard of all. So uh, the idea of the annual governance initiative uh, is to create this place, this agora, this place for a talk between all, uh, all stakeholders. Um, it has to um, detail, to uh, offer answers to gray areas that come uh, within uh, GDPR. And um, it has to um, be, be very open, and it's about coordination. We've got already many standard initiatives, but here it's about coordination. And finally, we've got to come up to a, a common a standard, a consensus for all stakeholders that could reduce costs for data circulation. And what we believe is that the My Data community, so a worldwide uh, community, is the perfect nest for this uh, community to grow and um, in order to create this, uh, this agora. 
Yes, so a little bit about the principles of uh, a new governance and before going into more detail about who is it and how it will work. Uh, first, it's of course to implement through technical, legal, business, design standards, the My Data Declaration that Silo was talking about. And uh, we add something that is not yet in the declaration is the separation of powers uh, to, that is very important to us. It is to say basically that the organizations that process data, that store it, are not the same ones than the organization handling the transfer and the permissions on the data. This allows for a truly human-centric uh, data circulation. Because if you don't have this, um, this separation, one service can say, I will hold all the data and I will manage the permissions. And you become dependent of that platform. And it's platform-centric once again. And uh, if it's platform-centric, we kind of already know which platforms are going to be those platforms. So this is an important fact, the separation of powers, and there are a lot of other, maybe even practical and implementation reasons for why this is a, a better idea. A bottom-up and top-down approach on how to define standards, and I will come back to that later. Cross-sector, uh, we see more and more through innovation, uh, through in health, in education, in mobility, that it's uh, cross-sector data exchanges. Uh, innovation will come by building those bridges between sectors, and it's very important that uh, the standards, the interoperability is to cross-catch sector. Sorry. And various experts, because we need various expertise. It's not only a technical problem, I would say the technical aspects are the easiest one to solve. Uh, it's a legal problem, it's a business model problem, it's uh, even design ethics uh, issues. And one main thing that we always say is to not recreate the wheel, meaning that there are a lot of standards existing, um, let's just put them together and find some harmonization. How will it work? So, I was always saying top-down and bottom-up. Top-down is to say, let's take GDPR, let's take portability, or let's take even the OECD principles, or digital human rights, and we're trying to translate them into standards. As I said, standards, it's technical, legal, business model, and design. Um, how is, does it work? It's a matricial organization. There are sectoral hubs, that also communicate with each other to guarantee cross-sector interoperability and more horizontal uh, work groups, let's say on authentication, on data models, on consents. Let's take consent. We know there are at least 20, 40 initiatives working on consent standardization. This is a loss of energy and a, a waste of effort. Let's all come together and agree at least on the minimum viable standard for consent for it to be interoperable. And the bottom up for us is the most, one of the most important aspects of it is that it's just not to create standards like that, but to focus on concrete value bringing use cases. The one Olivier uh, said about mobility, the one I described about education, we know it's high value, monetary or societal value. And this serves two purposes. First one is that organizations will make the effort to implement the standard because the value created by the data circulation is too great for them to pass along. And the second reason is once, let's say for the education part, we know all universities have these problems of data circulation, so once you create a standard for this specific use case, it spreads because all universities in the world will, uh, will take it, and the values that are embedded in that standard uh, spread with it. So it is, a new governance is really a standard supporting initiative organizing the actors that already work on standards that will find the value from concrete use cases uh, to build those, uh, those standards for the, for the fair data economy. A little bit of uh, storytelling and how we got there and who's with us and the next step. Uh, it's about a year ago we united 
uh, around 50 organizations across Europe in a white paper that was presented at the French Parliament to say, okay, what, how are you implementing data portability? And we saw there was a lot of interest in data portability, but a lot of fears and a lot of efforts that were not combined. Then we went to see the European uh, Commission that says, yes, you're right, there needs to be a governance, uh, structure it, engage actors around it, and uh, we will support and fund you. And that's where we are now with some of the actors you can see. So institutions, universities, federations, companies, consulting companies, media, cities, coming together to define those rules uh, with the methodology uh, I was uh, describing. And so for the next steps, uh, Olivier, you want to do the next steps? Oh, okay. So the next steps are, uh, please join us. The, the, so you can either propose a use case on which the governance will work or uh, be a member and work in some uh, in the designated work groups. Uh, we will start our first workshop in Lille uh, in the north of France at the International Forum of Cybersecurity the 28th of January and uh, you are all welcome to start working on those uh, use cases. So we have uh, three major use cases, the education one, the mobility one with cities, and the health one for uh, personalized health and uh, uh, health data sharing for research. And so all these actors will collaborate to build the minimum bricks to make that human-centric uh, data circulation happen. Thank you very much. A final word, <laughs> just the, just the link. So, um, if you if you want to get involved with us, so you've got the uh, the link to the website, uh, and there is a get involved button, and you can um, fill up a form, um, telling us what how you would engage with the initiative. So, we've got three ways to engage. Uh, a declaration of intent, so you tell us which role you could play. Are you a standardization organization, a project requiring data circulation, um, or something else? You just tell us. There is um, a work we are doing now uh, with many, many stakeholders, is the constitution design, stating exactly how does the governance work. It's a very complex job, but, but uh, really key to what we are doing. And finally, you can, as Matthias was saying, you can submit uh, a project for data circulation directly. So do not hesitate to go to the, to the website and tell us who you are and how you could engage with us. Thanks. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much for the introductions, for, for setting the scene. Um, yeah, before going to the World Cafe, before going to, to work in the groups, um, are there any questions, something that you would like to, I don't know, ask from Matthias Oliver or Silla or comment on, on something? Anyone? Something about data portability or maybe about the, my data, the new governance? No? <laughs> All right, okay. I'm running to you with the microphone. Um, thank you so much for the presentation. I'm Kian, I'm from the World Trade Organization. I just would like to challenge your assumption. Why do you think that um, standards applying across sectors would be better than having standards applying for specific sectors, taking into account the context of each sector? And the second question is on the meeting those standards. Would you consider the capacities of companies in developing countries to meet the standards as well? Okay. Thank you for the question. Thank you very much. So for the first question on cross-sector, the goal is to, of course, 
we, as we were showing in the in the ANG diagram, uh, there are sectoral hubs, so there will be specific things. It's just to that they coordinate between each other, so that there can also be, let's say, an cross-sector interoperability layer on top of this. Because if if we look at just the banking sector, new business models are between banks and retailers. If we look at the mobility sector, there is energy, there is transports, there is banking. If we look at education, there is education, and employment, and even also health data now being taken into account. So it's just to, to, to a bit imagine the new markets, the new value, and we see that those silos are not really uh, pertinent anymore to define, uh, to define uh, sectors. And this is why we have a big organization that the European Banking Federation, like GSMA for the telecoms, that are interested in coming because they already have their standards, but they're interested in this cross-sector uh, approach because that's where they see their future. And concerning the second question about uh, developing countries, um, a problem we face in many situations is uh, legacy systems. Uh, when we are talking with governments and their, their information system, or big companies, big banks, and so on, when they want to circulate data with other uh, key stakeholders, um, it's really hard to change a very big information system. So in developing countries, we can use this uh, lack, this uh, uh, lack of infra infrastructure, to um, start from nearly blank page on this topic, and uh, make it directly interoperable. Uh, so it might be, in fact, it might be easier in some situations with developing countries to achieve uh, to achieve this. We'll see. Thank you. We have time still for one question. Anyone? Okay. If we don't have any uh, other questions, I think that you are ready for the workshop. And I would ask Sila to, to tell us what to do. Yes. Um, so we at My Data Global, firstly, like to put our also hands on, and I would say in the workshop part, I will also ask you to kindly uh, help us in gathering some of the chairs and make uh, the smaller circles. We can then also discuss uh, further and clarify some of the questions that might arise during the smaller um, discussions. Um, and how do we do the World Cafe or uh, during the workshop part? Um, we uh, will focus on the topic of making data portability actionable and we have just uh, presented you uh, some of the examples and some of the kind of uh, proposals how to make the port uh, portability actionable through the governance, uh, through the standardization, also having the, the new model for personal data management. And many uh, of the different initiatives that you may be heard of is, is probably, um, it would be very valuable to also hear about those. So that's uh, the place also to kind of extract um, uh, those insights. And we'll focus on, on this topic uh, through the uh, four different lenses. What are the strengths right now in already uh, making my data, uh, um, making data portab portability actionable? Um, and that would be hosted and facilitated by Carolina, who is there. Um, then weaknesses. Olivia would uh, facilitate that discussion around the weaknesses that we don't really know or there are um, weak parts in making portability um, actionable. Then I will facilitate the discussion around opportunities, what can we actually improve, what are the avenues for exploring further, and then finally Matthias will focus on the, um, on the threats. We do it in a way that each of one of you can also be in each of those different pillars uh, and focusing uh, on, on that part. Um, and I would ask uh, the colleagues here uh, responsible for technical um, issues so to also give cues uh, with the sound when we uh, move to the next um, yeah, topic. Uh, we then have something uh, around 15 minutes uh, for each discussion. And after we've done the rounds, then we come uh, back together and uh, really um, harvest the essential, what are the key insights for the, uh, these uh, different parts in order to actually move forward from here today, uh, from that workshop and, and start uh, 
really making data portability actionable. Um, we wouldn't do it, uh, the kind of division of, of the different groups in a very structured manner. Let's uh, use the power of self-organization. Um, and it's not it's very, very important to have each group exactly the same size. Uh, but I would ask you to yeah, um, um, group up into four uh, different uh, groups. And if one group is uh, really much more bigger than the other, uh, then please uh, also divide yourself um, a bit better. Um, ideally, it would be great also if uh, we can have many different perspectives uh, from the government or from the business, from the um, CS, um, civil society organizations and so forth in, in the different groups. But yeah. Let's, uh, let's use the power of self-organization. Mm -hmm. so can, we, can we make ourselves visible? So I'm here, Carolina, with the strengths. There we have Olivier with weaknesses. So basically where you see the flip chart, this is our stations. Uh, Matthias, okay, is Matthias with the threats, and then Sila with the opportunities. opportunities so I would invite now maybe this, this group here sitting closest to me to turn the chairs and come closer uh, here. And then we start in two minutes? Yes. Perfect, thank you. Has everybody found their group already? So I invite you, everybody, uh, to even yourselves up in the four different groups, um, and then we would start the time um, to to start with the first discussions.
for uh, thank you for sharing. Um, now the time for this part um, is over, which means that now we move uh, not clockwise, anti-clockwise. Yeah, so we move anti-clockwise. So I thank my strength group, and now you move to the opportunities to to talk with with Silla. And then the group that was with Olivier comes to me. The group that was with Matthias goes to Olivier. And the group that was with Sila moves to Matthias. Thank you so much. Thank really you. well done. Yes. So, um, gentlemen who were working with Olivier on the weaknesses, I invite you to speak with me on strengths now.
time to move to the next. Uh, hello. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so thank you for, for sharing uh, during those 15 minutes. So now is the time to, to move to the next station. Um, basically, you should move now the anti-clockwise. So I'm now looking for a group uh, coming from Olivier to me to discuss the strength. Thank you. Yeah, 
Okay, thank you for this exchange. So perhaps you would like to change or perhaps not. Okay. <laughs>
finally you're here. Uh, so can I just get, I mean, you, you already worked together for some 45 minutes, but I'm Harry from Monaco. And that's Bob. Very nice to have you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. From where? Jordan. Jordan. Thank you. Gergana from the Berlin Museum in Berlin. Okay. And? Teresa from the Museum of Okay. okay. Fantastic. So great to have you here. So now I understand that you already did like uh, opportunities to be with your friends and with the witnesses. And this session is basically considered by many as like the possible like to think about your friends or to connect to the day job that's happening in your community. I don't know if you already like say like no, it's like a problem because there is like you know the stuff that some uh, part of that. And here is you know something that we work on. Basically, when we talk about the strengths for the data possibility, we talk a lot about that there is basically genuine need for, for, for that. And that genuine need spread from businesses, from services, from public and private sector. And there is also a genuine need or a wish from the commuters. There is this problem that is causing this huge problem. Um, and then I thought that, well, it's technically possible. Actually, it's technically it's not a big deal. the example from Brazil given where government has different goals and the rest of the country but basically that they need to identify the strong part of people in your people. And then also that you know bring the different sectors together. Yeah the reasons by GDPR but not only there is a convention on the eight of Council of Europe which actually is not as well as the EU on this. Test. But at the same time, maybe strong part of the infrastructure is that there is a push for developing infrastructure in your place, right? So it might be that something that is like so that then this can generate the, the, the push to develop, right? Thank you. 
So of course now it's possible like in, in EU like yeah you can do it with the data operate uh, with the mobile operators but it's still like I don't know if you change your medical operator healthcare center you know it's like I had a, like I don't normally we go to the public sector but sometimes we go to the private doctor and then I have the same doctor working in two clinics so we go to the and she's just in Queens or Fisher right so. Yeah, so, but convenience is definitely a strong, strong part of that. Because imagine having to update everyone about you. Yeah, and it still happens, no? Yeah. 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 Or maybe there's still this benefit is still not recognized, so that's what we make the opportunities, right? Or you can create new market values if you create new local products and you have to okay. more revenue. That is your strength. Okay, so basically that this this uh, law or, or, or the if you create data. new European services okay. that are taking part of the revenue away from Bodo and Facebook, right. it will be a technical strength for you. So basically this just means that it gives the base to create new, new tech services that can be successful without the national system. More competition, right? I think it's an interesting choice there. So more competition. So creating the, yeah, creating opportunities for more competition.
Well, I have very, very limited. Uh, I, I am very keen about the big data. Yeah. And thank totally you so much. Totally so you. then, totally thank you. And okay. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Now, uh, are you leaving? Ah, okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for the discussions. I see that some groups are still uh, talking and having, uh, sharing the points. But now we are coming to the moment where we would like to hear the insights collected, some of the thoughts, something that strikes you. Okay, hello. <laughs> Hi. Maybe we can come a bit closer with, for the sharing, for the looking in the insights part. Hello. No worries. No worries. Oh, but yeah, I don't know what is there. <laughs> okay. So let's come together for a bit of sharing and then, yeah, we know that it's late. You would like to go enjoy the city and our Christmas markets or, or, or are you getting ready for the evening parties? Gentlemen from the back. <laughs> Hello. Okay, they're busy talking. And come as close as, uh, as you could get. <laughs> <laughs> All right, not so, very many um, here, so only the brave people uh, stayed uh, with us, but we are very grateful that you decided to share your thoughts about uh, making data portability actionable, uh, making this really happen. I'm sure that this will help us in my data and this will also help our colleagues at the a new governance um, initiative to actually, you know, to, to work with that. Um, and now in this round, I would like to ask you for some key insights from each of this, um, from strengths, opportunities, weaknesses, and threats. What was something that striked you, something that, you know, you, you would like to share? Maybe on the strength side, anything to share? Something that, when you had the discussion with me, was there something that was interesting, appealing, or, or something that was, I don't know. Would you like to share? No, no, no. 
No? No insight? Okay, I will only say that uh, it felt for many um, of you that, uh, well, it's a bit difficult to think about the strengths of the data portability and it was, um, it was, um, Often we talked about the weaknesses and we talked about the opportunities, but still, as you see, okay, I don't have that beautiful uh, page as, as still on the opportunity site. It's a bit messy, but there is still a lot of good stuff. So a lot of uh, a lot of great things, and basically also having GDPR as the legal base and having also the push from the from the users that was definitely seen as the as the strength. So even the the need for privacy for better control over their data over their personal data was seen as the as the strength. Anyone? Okay. What about the opportunity side? Something that strikes. Oh yeah, maybe you'll push the mic, yeah. yeah push, the push the button. Push the button, no, yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Yeah, I mean like, I think it's, um, for me at least that was the most vague part. Okay. Because I could kind of understand the rest, but this is just like too much in flux. In flux, in motion. Because, you know, it's a bit of a, we don't have the clear definition of data ownership. That's a, that's a massive opportunity to actually to define it, not just a business case but actually to, de uh, to define the, what data ownership is, because you know, it's, we had a discussion that um, we don't actually know who owns what when you actually enter across the internet, because it's fa it's, it's the speed of, of transfer is massive, it's really fast. So the portability is great, that's the best thing, because you can just port like from here to there, but the opportunities are, I, I don't know, that, are there too many of them or they are just, hard to see from from the like because then we don't have the clear definitions of okay. certain things i don't I, I don't believe that that we have because we can't give the control to something that we don't have the clear definition of, of or access to thank you for sharing someone else any insight may i ask what is the duck duck go <laughs> it is a search engine that everyone should use Searching it's a search engine. It's kind of we've been discussing about right. the opportunity to actually ditch Google and uh, that because even if they are kind of GDPR the compliant, well they are not. Perfect. So yeah, as long as they give you um, predictions of what to buy next and you do that in Instagram, that's not GDPR compliant. Okay, fantastic. You want to say something? Uh, yeah, I would like to add to your point. I mean, um, what struck me when we looked at opportunities was uh, the insight that. Of course, we can make up our minds about possible opportunities and chances and how, uh, and we, we could try to predict what changes could happen. But let's be honest, it's a chaotic system. We just trigger something and we don't know what will happen. So there could be a whole branch of new opportunities, but it could also be a lot of failures, developments we didn't intend and developments that are striking and, and bad and put potentially trigger a lot of devastation because let's be honest we never experienced a world where we had free flow of data like everyone shares data with everyone we, we only we're used to this data silo world where we have encapsulated data and we don't know what will happen with our whole society with our research with our infrastructure with our civil society when we just open those black boxes and get access to and are able to share data we don't know that mm -hmm. and we can try to make up our minds about opportunities but in the end, we don't know. And we okay. potentially will not know till the end. Okay. So this means that basically the opportunities might also be the potential threats or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. I've heard that there is, okay. May you like come closer to a microphone? Thank you. So, now we know that um, when it comes to concentration of data, there are a few players that have a disproportionate access to huge amounts of data. How, did that, how was that taken into account in the discussion? Do you understand me? Yeah. I'm saying that right now, 
For example, if we speak to people who are teaching data science, they say they are restricted because the very big data sets are in the hands of Google, in the uh, hands yeah. of Facebook, Microsoft, major players, Huawei, um, Baidu, etc. I'm asking, how was that taken into account in the discussion? So I, I would say that probably the group that was talking about the weaknesses and threats maybe had a, a bit of insight on that. So would you like to share, Matthias? Yes, I think so. I was working on the threats. Um, and it falls back a bit to what you were saying. Uh, the, the, the main thing, if we had to sum it up in one sentence, is the biggest threat would be that we're not ready for uh, all this data circulation. Uh, not ready on, first of all, maybe the legal level uh, to define who's responsible for what and for uh, organizations taking profit out of that. Not ready on the organizational and business level where we can say, okay, all data now is open, but we don't have any new alternatives to build new services and it just reinforces existing monopolies. Uh, not ready also on the societal level where, as you were saying, we have no foresight on uh, what will happen and uh, no mechanisms to kind of maybe reverse or ground check. And no, not ready on the individual level where we lack education on uh, what can be done with our data and even on a deeper level that Everybody say, okay, through this data circulation, we're going to empower people with their data. We're going to empower people with their life. But throughout whole humanity, uh, people are not trained to be empowered. Uh, if you tell them, okay, now you're going to decide your health, you're going to decide your education, you're going to decide your job, they, they didn't receive the education or the, the social structures to, to have such kind of power. And maybe they're not ready to, to receive that kind of power. So the threats wasn't, weren't thinking about solutions, and I could tell you about solutions to this yeah. problem, which come more, in my sense, from public investment. But the, the whole threats were, what if we're just not ready? And uh, there are just some organizations that benefit uh, out of it without any kind of foresight uh, in what happens. Um, there's a question Thank from you. someone online. Yes, I've heard that there is a question online. Um, yes, please. So I'll try to unmute him and he can ask for himself. Okay, fantastic. And let's try. <laughs> Of the way they, so let's see. Let's they do you do you have the question written as well, or? Okay. And this is impossible to see. <laughs> let's see how it works. Hello. Okay. Okay. Can you unmute yourself? Hmm. Oh, don't um, no, there is a muted or okay. okay. Are you able to read the question? Works, huh? Okay, please put the your microphone on. <laughs> Do you want to read it? Out? Okay. Um, so he wants to know how the IGF is going to address the data sharing policies apart from the internet governance and other standards, uh, what measures could be taken to overcome the data sharing problems in the Middle East, uh, even for educational purposes? Um, um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay, there is still apparently something more, but unfortunately we cannot hear you. And of course, at the same time, we don't represent here the, the IGF, but this is our, our modest contribution to the IGF. Um, and I hope that this message about what we are trying to bring as, as my data and as new governance, and of course, like uh, bring, speaking about those threats and opportunities, but also weaknesses, um, that will also be you know, shared and, and, and spoken. I don't know if you would like to comment how we can still bring this further to the world, this message about the data sharing, and also in the, the other regions of the world. 
So mm -hmm. that was one of the aspects we discuss uh, about weaknesses, limitations, mm -hmm. about what we are doing right now. Uh, we are trying to do this in a very collaborative manner with all stakeholders around the table. But uh, what was said um, at this session is it was, it is what we are doing is very European centric. We have to admit it. Uh, it's very GDP, it comes from GDPR. We are talking a lot about values, uh, political uh, ways of doing things that are based in Europe mostly. And we see that the debate is not a European debate, it's forward debate. So I don't have clear answers about how we, we can do, but the problems, the basic problems are the same for everyone on the planet. We want access to education, we want uh, access to mobility, uh, cheap mobility, uh, we want uh, well-functioning governments, and so on and so on. So the problems are the same. And um, um, apart from still doing this in a very collaborative manner and uh, being very clear about the values behind what we propose and the fact that there are different ways to see, uh, to see the world, I have no clear <laughs> solution. It's a political issue uh, on top of this. We won't solve everything with what we do, sadly. Mm. Maybe something to just Thank add you. there is, is that uh, definitely, a, a, like the di including the di diverse, diverse perspectives is very important, and really giving the voice to people in, in the Middle East, in, in, uh, in different corners of the world, to speak from their point of view what is uh, working actually in, in their local context, and then, and then kind of giving that collaborative uh, point to um, the work that, uh, for example, um, here in Europe is being done, in order to kind of find the similarities, differences, and, and kind of how can we uh, make this work on a global scale, as, of course, as well. And the, that probably doesn't mean that there needs to be one approach to all of the different corners of the world. There is also these levels of local and global, uh, and global implementations. But on the global level, there, of course, needs to be this part where we unite, give the voice to different parts um, to kind of, yeah, um, give that meaningful input in order to um, figure these uh, things out. So. Yeah. And the, the good thing is, from, from our perspective, we are My Data Global, and uh, here now we are hosting the session on GDPR and the data portability, but we also work with the issues of advocacy on the global level. So we also hope to our, our, our participant online to connect with us and, and to work uh, on that with us together in the, in the future. Of course, the region of the Middle East is underrepresented we have to admit it, um, but uh, yeah, we have to get also more more participants from there. Okay, we have here the, the security. Is everything okay? <laughs> Are we fine? <laughs> Are we safe? <laughs> All is good in our control. Perfect. But you reminded me that now it's perhaps the time where we should wrap up and come to the closer of the uh, close of the closer of the session, and maybe give you some points of like you know. What are the next steps? Here, Sila was, uh, was typing uh, the, the notes from the session. We will also document what was, what was collected in the flip charts. Uh, you can, if you think like, okay, will we get any report from that? Um, anything, you know, that you can, you can refer to. At this very moment, the presentation we had is not in the, in the application. It's not in the chat yet but we will upload it there, also with some of the notes. So please uh, revisit it, and also you can join. I don't know how many of you are using Slack, a uh, communication platform. We are very active on Slack. We, we use, so mydata.org slash Slack. This is one of the channel. We have there the channel on the data portability, and we have the channel on um, a new governance. So when you join my data Slack, find yourself to those channels. We will post the updates. Um, there and of course we we invite you if if those ideas have heard from many of you like speaking the same language and like referring to the same values and 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 talking about this yeah positive positive 
push from the users. Um, I invite you to, to visit our page, to check the declaration, to check our papers, white paper, for example, and possibly also to join us. We, we invite the individual members and we invite the organizational members. Someone asked me if we are like Greenpeace for data. <laughs> um, I said that, well, maybe like I'm nasty, but we're not maybe so radical. We are still a platform for business, legal, tech, and society to work together. Um, and you can join anytime. And some announcements also for, for the events next year. Sila spoke about those uh, four international May Data conferences in Helsinki. Uh, next year we are going global, we embrace our uh, global diversity and we embrace it also by bringing our My Data Europe 2020 event to, to Berlin. Yes, <laughs> yay! And we will also be in, in Tokyo before one month before the Olympic Games. Um, okay, someone wants to take a picture, please do and share uh, on social media. Um, and in your networks. Um, many people were here from Brazil and we are super happy to actually bring my data South America or Latin America 2020 to Rio de Janeiro. Uh, so please uh, join us. Okay, we don't have the date here for some reason. 24th of June. 24th of June together with the CDPC conference. 24th of June. And okay, and we're back to Berlin. There is my Nairobi. Someone, something is wrong with those slides. Yes, and there is also the. There will be in November, 18 to 20 of November. There will be the conference, international open data conference in Nairobi, in Kenya, and uh, we will have the My Data Africa 2020 together or in conjunction with the IODC. Uh, we don't know exactly yet which of those days. It's like 18 to 20 of November. We don't know which date we will be there with my data. But when you, if you follow our social media, if you follow our our website, if you join our newsletter, you will be updated. So for for the all of you, but especially for the people coming from Africa, welcome. Yes, so this is from us. This is from me, Sila, Matthias, and, and, and Oliver from My Data Global, from a new governance initiative. And well, thank you so much for staying with us. Thank you for sharing. I see that this is not a very easy task to contribute at this, at this hour. Many people, well, had to leave, but we are very grateful that you were here with us. So the big round of applause to all of you. Have a wonderful um, week of IGF, and I hope we meet again. And please also take the leaflet, so it says save the date and become a member of my data. If you don't like it, maybe your colleague will like it, so make the use out of it. Thank you.